Well, today is kind of a working Wednesday walkabout, Stuart. And I, I'm going to do just a few things. I've got my pruners, but I want to start out here on the porch because I want to show everyone something. This has been a very pleasant little surprise. I had this topiary in this pot, it was on the front porch. And when I brought it to the cottage, it was on the old front porch. And when I brought it to the college cottage, I noticed that I was getting all this germination on these little seedlings. And because they were in this pot, I, I, it was just like, you know how when sometimes you don't recognize someone when they're out of context? <laughs> and I didn't recognize these because they were out of context. Now that they've gotten large enough, I believe these are foxglove seedlings, Ooh. which are very, very precious. And I imagine what happened was that I set probably, I deadheaded a foxglove uh, bloom set it here some of the seed dropped in here and it germinated so I I'm pretty sure that's what these are and I didn't recognize them as such because they were out of context they weren't in the garden they were in this little pot so I'll let them get a little bit bigger and once uh, we have a cloudy day and it's um, uh, oh, just a little bit more beneficial for them to be transplanted. I will do that. So let's come over here, Stuart, because I think I have, and again, the Stuart will be, the hose will be ever present for a while. <laughs> the Stuart will be ever present. And Stuart will be ever present, <laughs> trying not to trip over the hose. But I also noticed that I had some in this pot. So I will, have, I will have a whole little cluster, a whole, and if, if I can have boxwood villages, I guess I can have foxglove villages, Ooh. can I not, Stuart? And this is a great tip because when they are in a pot, and especially when that pot is mulched in gravel, they really germinate very well because the seed then falls into the cracks and crevices of the gravel and that kind of protects them, heats them, keeps them moist, and then they will germinate. So once those get a little bit bigger, those I will plant out somewhere in the front. I'm not sure where. Okay, that leads me to the next thing that I want to talk about a little bit. And that is, uh, and you know, I love the way you guys, you followers, sometimes I feel like you're almost mothering me <laughs> in talking about, oh, Linda, watch the hose so you don't trip, <laughs> and, and Linda, watch the, you know, the trenches and put down plywood. It's, it's, it's stuff I don't always do, but it makes me feel taken care of. Does it make you feel taken I, care I of, think, Stuart? I think you call that love. I, I, I just think it's so... Anyhow, <laughs> if you are vicariously mothering me, even if you're 20 years old, I appreciate the heck out of that. So thank you for that. And one, but I digress, one person's comment was when I said that I was going to mulch this in gravel, um, I probably didn't explain myself well enough. And I think a lot of you said, oh my goodness, that's going to make it too hot that is, uh, and it may not give me the look that I want. But when I say I'm going to mulch it in gravel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some gravel into the mulch. And I am hoping I can get, and this is answering another question, if I can get that wonderful Happy Grow soil conditioner that I get at Lowe's, if they're carrying it this year and I haven't looked to see yet, I believe they are, then I will mix some gravel into that and I will then mulch it. The reason being for the same reason that those seeds germinate so well in the gravel mulch that I've got in the pots, that little bit of gravel will also help when I am seeding things like Cleome, some Verbena bonariensis, um, and just some other things that I want to get established here that will then go to seed, larkspur, things of that nature. And it will also make it look a little bit more harmonious with the infill that's in between the pavers and that's also in between the flagstone and the brick on the patio. And for any of you who question whether or not we would actually 
sit on a patio that was in the front yard. This has gotten probably more use than any room in my house, yes, hasn't it, Stuart? Yeah, we just true. had some visitors. Um, Irene just visited from Washington State. Who, her daughter lives here in Oklahoma City. And we even sat on the patio for a little while. So it is definitely getting its use. Now, a number of you have also commented on the brick and that it instantly looks like it matches the vintage of the house. And that's because this is old recycled brick. This um, Kayla found it and it is old brick mixed in with some original brick that was left over uh, from this house itself. So that's why it looks like it all blends in kind of seamlessly. Now over here on the walkway, you'll notice that there's nothing growing in between here yet, but notice how a lot of these pavers already, they're kind of muddy and they already look a little aged. And I actually like that, even though these are muddier than they normally will be. And pretty soon, this flagstone on the patio, it too will age, get a little bit, uh, a little bit dirtier and start growing some moss and lichens and things of that nature. I'm getting there. And Stuart, <laughs> so I know I'm, I'm I not always fault. move, fa I move to... <laughs> faster. I go, I hop just like my brain. I hop from one part of the garden to the other part of the garden, just like my brain does. Um, but I want to talk about this a little bit because this is my question of the day. So I was talking with Carrie because she is also working some with the Southern Living Plant Collection. And we were talking about what the recipe was for this area that um, I've kind of dubbed the lemon walk. But then Carrie or someone, it might have been one of you, called it Lemon Lane or Lemon Lime Lane. Ooh, I like that. And that's pretty fun too. So here's my question of the day. For now and into perpetuity, what should we call this? Should we call this the Lemon Walk or should we call it Lemon Lane? I definitely like Lemon Lane. You're voting Lane. for Lemon Lane. Like that's well, let, let me know what you think because all of these plants are very lemonly. Lemony. Lem <laughs> I lemon, like lemonly. I know, lemonly. <laughs> I've got Lemon Lime Nandina and this Miss Lemon Abelia. And then there'll be also, there's some kind of pale yellow things. So, i.e. the lemon lane or the lemon walk. So, so I will know how to address it. You guys pick the moniker and we'll kind of do an informal poll and see what people like to call it. So I had some of these, this is one of the things I'm gonna be doing today. I had some of these Narcissus or Daffodils from Trader Joe's. I had these in the house. Say that name again. Over Easter, Narcissus, Daffodils. The whole, okay, cool. Okay, so these are, I had these in a pot. I got them at Trader Joe's and I had them for Easter. But unlike tulips that have been forced, I can plant these in the ground. So once these are done, I did deadhead them so they don't go to seed. And then I'm gonna plant them in here amongst the other residents of Lemon Lane. <laughs> and the nice thing is then these will die back. And as these grow, as these shrubs grow, it will obscure the foliage as it turns brown because the foliage on these daffodils needs to die down to feed them for future bloom. And so I'm going to plant those in here and intermix some of them. And also some of the daffodils that were blooming here before, I'm going to transplant some of those in between in between these other lemon residents. Now, some of you asked, do I have to wait till fall to do that or can I do that now? And actually, you can go ahead and do that now. They're probably not going to bloom, but I can, if, as long as I leave the foliage on them, I can transplant some that I temporarily moved to the back. I can transplant those up in here. And again, that foliage too will die back and be obscured by these plants as they grow. Now, this is one of the fun, in addition to, this is a, this is a Wednesday walkabout full of surprises, Stuart. <laughs> so in addition to my foxglove seedlings that were a surprise, when we were digging in here, this is like garden archaeology. Look here. 
I found a piece, a piece of china. Oh. Some, some little remnant of owner's past. And isn't that kind of fun? Yeah. And so, so colorful. I know. Isn't it fun? So I will put that in some kind of special place. And, and it will remind me of the very first days here at the Cottage on the Hill. So let's talk a little bit more about what's, what's going on here and what my work consists of for today. So you may recall that I had some, some lavender blooming Veronica at the other house and I dug up several clumps of it. It goes to seed fairly readily. I absolutely love it, as do the pollinators. And I had some of that in a greenhouse overwintering, and it came home recently, and we just planted it in here. Now, it's already getting kind of leggy, and also some of these plants that have been in the greenhouse, once they get out here in the wind and in full sun and basically reality, a lot of the foliage will start to droop and start to kind of uh, look a little sad. So what I'm going to do for a couple of different reasons is I'm going to cut this back really hard. So I'm going to cut the Veronica back almost completely to the base. Stuart, can you see here? I think so. Okay, almost completely to the base. Let me get a little closer here. And what it will do is it will put out brand new shoots that will come directly from the base, and then I'll even pinch it out. Now at this point, let me, let me back up a little bit. I could leave it like this, and I could pinch it out right here in between, so close. in between these two leaves. I could pinch that out, and then at each place I pinched at the leaf node where the leaf meets the stem, it would then send out another set of leaves, which would make this bushier but I want this to be really bushy and I'm gonna let it kind of start over and then as it grows, I'm going to pinch it, which will delay bloom, but it will also make for a much larger, bushier plant and that's okay by me. And these are really tough roots. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna experiment with this and I have a feeling it's gonna work. I'm going to bring these in and I'm going to strip the lower leaves and then I'm going to put this in water and see if I can get these cuttings to root. And then I can transplant these around in the garden. Now this also reliably spreads when it goes, when, the, when it blooms, it will reliably spread by seed. And then I will have those lavender blossoms pretty much everywhere. And what I love about this is it will spread, but not in an obnoxious way, in a very happy way. And I love it, and I love the sheen of it. I love it as a, the fact that pollinators also love it. I love it as a cut flower, and I think even when it's not in bloom, it just looks like a pretty plant to have out in the garden. And here's some more right here. And I'm going to do the same thing to this, and I'm just going to whack it all back. And I could do this even if it was established. And then actually what it's going to do is force out more root growth and then it will flush out in new growth. And I think it's going to be really, really happy. So I, I love that. I'm going to give it a good drink of water and maybe an organic feed later. So I'm going to take these clippings and I'm going to just set them here in the shade until I go in and I put them in water. And I'll let you know how that experiment works. Now, some of you may be wondering, how am I gonna work in this garden without trampling the soil? And one thing you wanna do to have really good healthy soil is not really walk on it. Well, some of that is, is a little bit unavoidable, but I can do some things to prevent that. And originally in my design, I was going to have two rather formal symmetrical walkways that came off of this center sidewalk and then was going to go towards two focal points on both the west end and on the east end. Well, now I've decided that I want it to be a little bit more informal, a little bit more cottagey. And so in my attempt to always use what I have, I'm going to reuse some of these pavers 
that were on the east side and we're going to replace those with flagstone so it will look a little bit more cottagey and a little bit more earthy but you can see where i've already used some of them up here on the border so those that remain i am going to use as stepping stones ooh. and ooh, that even impressed stewart so I'm gonna use these as <laughs> stepping stones in the garden. And once all of this fill, filled out, and this is, my, this is my least favorite thing about starting a new garden is I want it all ready to be filled in. <laughs> I don't wanna wait for it to grow up. Um, and also keep me up at night worrying if all of this stuff is going to get established if we have a very, very difficult summer. And that leads me to another tip, that no matter how drought tolerant, no matter how heat loving and tough the things you plant are, when they are first getting established, they need all sorts of TLC. So they will need additional water, they will need not so much additional feeding other than organic, but they really will need additional water and maybe in some instances even some artificial shade to get established. So today I'm going to take some of these stepping stones and I'm going to place them, and this will be a work in progress, because as I begin to work in the garden, I'll know where Yeah, to, where they need to go. Right? Yeah, yeah, very strategically where to place these. And then I can work in here, and I may even have to add more later, but I can work in here without compressing the soil, and the soil will be compressed only in those areas where I step. So that that is my rationale for doing that and again at first all of this looks overly busy it looks overly spotty and it looks too cluttered well that's because the plants have not grown in yet and once they grow in they will all kind of grow together and insinuate themselves into one another and Ooh. it will have what i'm hoping will be more Stuart's laughing at and me no insinuate themselves into each other i like that just again it, i like it, the way you talk <laughs> it will over time look have more of a prairie look up here so there'll be a little kind of a, a prairie on the hill so that's what I'm hoping for anyway. And it will look more piecemeal, more spotty, more cluttered, and less cohesive than I want it to look originally because that's just the name of the game when you're establishing a garden. So that's one of the things on my Working Wednesday walkabout. And I see over here that, and by the way, as if I didn't say it earlier, most of these are gonna be covered up because as stuff grows in, you won't be able to see them, and only I, the gardener. And me. And Stuart, and Stuart the photographer. This is how I'll get around the garden, too. Stuart the photographer <laughs> will know where they are. This keeps my shoes clean, yes. for sure. Yes, yes. So I'm gonna put the one there because I see I've got some more Veronica to cut. And when this came out, I divided the clumps into multiple clumps so I would have more of it. So I'm gonna come over here and I've got some more Veronica. that I'm going to cut. And then I will have not only the enjoyment of a bushier plat plant, but I'll also have the enjoyment of watching it as it starts emerging. That's always a fun thing to do. So I'll place the rest of my stepping stones. Now, I know that I originally said there was going to be a hedge here, and instead I decided to do these little boxwood villages, which I think are very, very cute, and I do love them. And actually, I think I might end up liking this strategy better than having a solid hedge, because number one, it will make trimming it easier. The other thing, it looks a little less formal, which I will like. So how I envision it is there will be a little cloud village of boxwood. And then over here, I've got this sweet little Miss Bonnie Spirea. And I've got two clumps of it here. So this will fill out. It will start merging into the boxwood villages. I've got three of them here. But what it will also do 
it will also get up to about here and it will spread by two to three feet and it will bloom in pink and it will bloom in kind of a freeform manner. So I'll have this evergreen, glossy evergreen boxwood village. Then I'll have these beautiful little clouds of pink spirea. I'll have the textural and light absorbing difference between a leaf that is matte and a leaf that's shiny. So this foliage is Stuart's laughing at me. I didn't again. see what you did, and all of a sudden you screwed. I thought something happened. Yeah, I was yeah, like, what I, happened? I was trying to I was trying to show the difference in the leaves, but it, it it fluttered away. So I've got this glossy foliage, then I've got the matte foliage of this spirea. And spirea is pretty tough. Uh, I'm at least in it has historically been. So I'm hoping it will be tough here at the cottage on the hill because things all, you know, it's all very contextual. And what I found to be tough before may not be tough here. I'm just trying to wait and see. So all of this in my imagination is all growing together and there's all sorts of butterfly pollinator activity, some of which I showed you yesterday. At this point, it's largely yellow, white, and blue slash purple. And I'm trying to decide if that's the color palette that I want to continue through with the summer, but I think I'm probably going to have to bring in some pinks. And where the pink is going to come in is in, and I also have some of that spirea on this side in the same kind of pattern. So it kind of spills over like a stream, it kind of spills over from one side to the other. And I, let's take a moment to just applaud how Stuart can hold that camera. So <laughs> I don't know how he does it. And for such a long period of time, you're such a trooper, Stuart. I swear, whatever muscles it takes to do it are strong. To do it. So, <laughs> but I think I'm going to have to bring in some pink drift roses because I've got I've that hat's going to blow off, Linda. I know. My hat's going to blow off even though it's secured on. And it's not even that windy today. It's it just a nice breeze. Yeah. Um, but it's like a sail that catches the wind, like a kite. Um, so over here, I've got all of this pink coneflower that will bloom in pink. And I think it'll be really, really beautiful. And then if I have some white and pink drift roses, that cascade down the hill, I think that's gonna be beautiful. Now, speaking of, let's come, actually, Stuart, let's do this. If you'll walk to the bottom, because so many people commented that they liked the view from when you were down at the bottom of the hill and I was up here at the top. All right, we're gonna do movie magic. S snap your fingers. So, movie magic. I don't know how any of that works, but Stuart <laughs> does. And sometimes our movie magic works and sometimes, hey, that's how sometimes it it's off a little bit. <laughs> like in yesterday's video, our audio was off a little bit from, but we do the best we can, don't we, Stuart? Hey, everybody still We do it. the best we can. So I, I do like the way it looks. I love the tiered effect of this layer down here and this layer up here. And I think it's kind of dramatic. Do you, Stuart? Well, of course. I think it's rather dramatic and it will get more dramatic over time. I want to talk a little bit about these larger boxwood villages that are here. And some of these boxwoods are getting stressed and we really need to get some rain. But you'll notice that I've got some erosion and some runoff here because of the rich mix that was put in when we planted these boxwood. So to prevent that, here is a very rough, unprofessional example of what Javier is gonna do later. And that is, for lack of a better word, we're going to mulch these bed sections to flank both sides of these steps. And what, in essence, it will do once Javier finishes it, is it will kind of mulch these two areas in brick, which will simultaneously hold in the dirt 
serve as a mulch and also as a design as a design uh, element will continue the brickwork look here and down into this space and then there will be clumps along these two borders of drift roses that spill down in a defined way spill down from the upper terrace towards the lower terrace and then a lot of this as i mentioned the other day that originally i was going to have uh, completely in plants i think now is going to to largely be lawn, be lawn with pockets of drift roses so that means that we are renovating this lawn area so I have been digging out big clumps of weeds. We've top dressed it in some rich mix. We put some fertilizer down. And now once my sprinkler system gets in place, I'll be able to water this area and it will hopefully be, be green. And over time, because it will take some time, over time it will be beautiful and I think will be a wonderful canvas upon which, green canvas, upon which the rest of the things at the top of the terrace can play. So that's kind of my, that's kind of my design idea at this point in time. What I really need most of all right now, Stuart, is some rain. Yep. And we don't have any rain on the horizon. So until my sprinkler system gets, in-ground sprinkler system gets established, I'm gonna to have to put a sprinkler on this. I fully expect, by the way, I fully expect that I'm gonna lose some plants. Uh, I may lose as many as 30% of these plants. I'm not really sure. That is up to Mother Nature and the weather. I'm gonna do everything I can to prevent that. But I think when you're gardening in extreme conditions like I garden here in Oklahoma, particularly in this, in this area with this kind of exposure, with the summer we're supposed to have, it's gonna be difficult. But hopefully these plants and this gardener are up to the challenge because what other choice do we have, Stuart? That's, that's you it. just got a garden where you are. So I think that wraps up this Working Wednesday walkabout for today, Stuart, because I actually have more work to do. You guys have a wonderful Wednesday.